Hey everybody, it's Craig Maynard calling. Uh, I'm the Control System Advisor and a first senior mentor for FRC West up in Calgary, Alberta. And uh, I'm playing around on the shop again. This time I'd like to play around with the uh, analog inputs and the PWM outputs of my RoboRio, see if I can get them to talk to each other. In this case, I'm taking my analog input, which is a zero to five volt signal divided across this potentiometer to produce a zero to five volt input to my analog, and I'm using it to control a little servo. So as I change the potentiometer to different voltages between zero and five, I get my, uh, I get my servo to change across about 180 degrees of rotation. So how do I do that? Well, let me show you how we do that. So first thing I'm going to do, I, I loaded everything into the Teleop uh, VI, so that's why it's running right now in Teleop. I'm going to turn that off, and we'll just put that down for the time being. And I've got the uh, code running in the robot main. Uh, don't need that. I'm going to turn that off. And we'll put that down. So three things we have to look at. We got to look at begin.vi to initialize our drivers. We have to look at finish.vi to close down our drivers. And we have to look at the teleop vi, which is going to run the code when you're in teleop mode. So let's look at the begin vi. Uh, comes up pretty fast. There's our uh, begin vi front panel. Now I can do control E or show block diagram. And this is how we're going to set up. Let's start with our analog inputs over here. The analog input is open. We're using an AI open VI tied into an AI reference number VI. The AI open and the AI reference number are all found in the WPI library. So if you uh, click on this, go down to the WPI robotics library, and we're going to not sensors, but uh, IO. And you'll see down here, there's our analog input. And our analog input, we can see the analog input open and the reference number set right here with a little in arrow and that's going to define the reference number now for the reference number I'm using analog zero as a, as a name I pulled out of my out of my hat and uh, for the AI open I have to tell it what AI input I want to use analog input I want to use and I can use AI zero through AI three um, those are the four that are on the RoboRio. Also, the AI MXP0 through MXP3, which are on the expansion port. I've got four of them. So I've got eight possible analog inputs I can use. Every one of them, zero to five volts. Okay, so the analog, and I, uh, again, I just connected that up very simply by, uh, let me just delete this one here. I'll delete that, delete the wire. Very easy to hook up. You just right click on it and you see create a constant. That's all you have to do. And it's the same thing here with this middle input. You just right click on it and say create a constant and it'll it'll ask for the string analog zero. Okay, so that's all I need to do for my begin. And let's have a look at what's going on on the finish. This is us closing the drivers now, so we'll open up the uh, control panel and then we'll open up the window. And in this one, we want to go to the WPI library. In this case, we want to dig into the analog input again, but we want to use the reference number get, which we see right here, a reference number get, and we want to use the AI close down here. So uh, the AI get needs to know, uh, you have to put a constant on here, in which case you have to define AI0, which is the one you want to close, and the name of that uh, particular analog input zero, analog zero. And inside this, uh, in that, inside this loop right here, we want to put an AI close function in there. So when this runs, the analog input zero is going to be closed. The device is going to be nicely shut down. So it's very, very good to uh, include both the analog input uh, beginning, opening and closing using the beginning and finished. Now let's have a look at the analog input in the Teleop VI. This is where the actual meat and potatoes happen. So there's my Teleop VI. I'm going to go window, show block diagram. And here we are. There's our, there's our block diagram as we discussed before. Slide right down. Again, we're using the analog input um, block from the WPI library. Uh, we're choosing the analog in reference number, which is reference number get. 
Okay, so we're getting that. We right click on this and choose a constant, and then we type in analog zero, which is what we set up in the uh, in the begin. And then we tie this to the analog input get voltage. The analog input get voltage right here. Um, and that's going to get the voltage from that analog input and it's going to export it on this output right here, the voltage output. I've hooked up a, uh, a display to my instrument panel, my control panel, that shows what the voltage is, right? It'll be a number between 0 and 5 volts. And over here, I'm going to make it go into my um, servo set angle. Now the servo set angle we're going to look at later on is a number between 0 and 180 degrees. In this case, that's the angle of the servo. This is only producing 0 to 5 volts. So I want to take that and I want to take 180 degrees, divide it by 5 volts to give me a scale it down. Uh, so I'm going to 180 divided by 5 gives me 36. So I'm going to take this 5 number right here, multiply it by 36, that'll give me 0 to 180 instead of 0 to 5. And that's going to go into my set angle. So that's all I have to do for my analog input. And, uh, and now when you run it, it should automatically do that. Now let's look at how we actually control the servos. So we're gonna we're gonna just close this again. Close our and let's go back to our begin VI and look at the servo control. The begin VI will show the block diagram. And we don't want that right now. What I'd like to do is go back down to WPI library and we want to go to the actuators and we want to go to servos these are all the servo actuators so here's where our open servo is which is right there and there's our reference number set which is right there again you just right click on the input and you add a constant give it a name I call it servo 1 you can call it whatever you like uh, we have to give it a PWM input I chose uh, PWM 9 here oh this is a uh, this looks like I got set wrong. It's AI0. PWM9. Uh, I didn't want to use PWM0 or 1 because those are used up here, obviously, for the uh, for the two motors. So we're going to we're going to avoid those. Um, but I'm going to use PWM9. I can use any of the PWMs that are free and open that up and initialize my servo. So that's all I had to do for my begin. I made a little change here. Let's save it. And we'll close that. Now let's have a look at how we close off those drivers. We'll go to Window, Show Block Diagram again, and uh, we close off the servos using the uh, reference number set input right here, which we defined already in the begin. Uh, we call it servo 1 in the begin, so we're going to call it that on the output. And that goes into the servo close, which is right where are you? There it is. There's a servo close, which I have right there. So uh, that's all there is to closing the uh, drivers. Very important. So we'll shut that down. Now let's go to Teleop. Teleop's got the code we use for the servos. Again, very simple, barely an inconvenience. So if you look at the block diagram for Teleop, you can see um, We'll, again, we're going to go to WPI library so I can show you where you find them. Uh, they're under actuators. So we're going to go to actuators. We're going to go to servos. No, not motor control. We're going to go to act. <laughs> little jumpy today. Let's try that one more time, a little slower. So we're going to go to the WPI library. We're going to go to actuators. We're going to go to servos. I'll just pin that down. We're using this servo reference number set. This is where I got this one from, and I defined the reference number that we set up in the begin, and the set angle. So we're going to use the set angle um, VI right here, and I stuck it right there. And of course, just cross-reference, just brought those two signals in, the error and the device. And the third input here is the actual angle I want to set it for. Again, this has to be 0 to 180. So I took my 0 to 5 and multiplied it by 36 to get 0 to 180 and fed it into my set angle. Okay, so once that was all done, um, then I simply went to robot main and I, uh, and we would, we would open that one. Here it is in the wrong screen. So we're going to open this one. Uh, we're going to run it. In 
you notice while it's loading in, here's my dashboard. You see there's no robot code running there right now. Just about done. Sometimes it's quick, usually it's slow. And any second, I can feel it. We close that. And there we see the robot code is running now. So I should, if everything works well, be able to enable this and control my control my servos just like that so that's how you use the analog inputs and that's how you use the PWM output to control the servo all kind of stuff you can do with the servo now you can use it for uh, maybe controlling the angle of your um, camera if you want you can use it for pull, pulling a pin or pushing a pin to uh, to uh, operate or release a, uh, a device you know uh, point to a direction all kinds of stuff you can do with these analog servos PWM servos and analog controls. So uh, let me know if you have any questions about that. I'd, I'd be happy to uh, answer anything I, I know how to do. So thanks very much for watching my little video and I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.